So we've just come up to the uh, Katoomba in the Blue Mountains and I'm just going to show you guys a very popular place where tourists come called the Three Sisters. And so it's cold and windy. Actually I was hoping it was going to be a little bit better but it is cold even though I'm in t-shirts and shorts. <laughs> okay let's show you where we are. Just look at this place here. This is what I came up here for. Extremely beautiful. Bloody cold and windy though. So let's keep walking. Just look at how beautiful this area is. I just think this is where I grew up. It's just amazing, this whole area. So yeah, the views up here are just spectacular. And even that hill in the far distance there. As a kid, I walked up there with my dad and his army group. And um, we actually went camping at the top of that hill. And it's a really steep climb to get up the top. I can really tell you that. Mm. Let's look over here. scenic railway and that's where we're going to go next as well just to check out that area as you can see down there that's where we're going to go just beautiful here So there's a few, a few different viewpoints you can come to to get your hands on the view here, which is really beautiful. And of course you've got the main viewpoint up the top, but it looks like they've created a few smaller ones, which is even more brilliant, I think. Just helps spread out the people a little bit. But, yes, you can tell it's a little bit of a fall here. <laughs> Just look it out. But extremely beautiful, the Blue Mountains, and highly recommend coming here if you're on a tourist trip. And here's just another angle from one of the other viewpoints, but yeah, very beautiful area. And we also As you can see, this area is bloody beautiful and it's definitely worth a visit if you're up here in the Blue Mountains. So give it a try. Check out Katoomba, the Three Sisters. Also, you do have a visitor's information center here. If you're after some information on the area of Katoomba, you can just go in there and the helpful staff there will tell you what you can see in the Katoomba area here up in the Blue Mountains. Of course, there's a variety of hiking tracks around here as well. So if you're a hiker and you like a bit of a walk, then there's a lot of options up this way. So we're just going up to Scenic World here in Katoomba in the Blue Mountains, and we're gonna do a few different rides here, but I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do now. So I think we're gonna do both of these today, which they look like a bit of fun, and they're gonna give us a great view. So now we're gonna buy some tickets. Don't have a ticket? Buy your ticket. Okay, let's go buy it. Mm. So now we're just going in here to buy some tickets for the ride ahead. Ah, that's an overshot. <laughs> Please wait here. Oh, wait, here we go. So let's go buy some tickets in here. You also got tourist items in here, just to point out. So, so yeah, so we've got various touristy items here as well. <laughs> you can buy little stuffed kangaroos. <laughs> yeah, you got cool things. And um, also, you get yourself some hats. Other sorts of fancy touristy things. But let's go in and do the ride. So, two adults and one child was $150 to get on all the rides here. And so, yes, we're going to enjoy. And yes, that's what we'll be catching. It's just coming in slowly at the moment. The three sisters made solitary in the ruined castle, left them into the tomb of Hall. And if you're on that shiny glass for the little folks, if you are scared of heights, you're in exactly the right place. Look there, everyone. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my once we pop over the edge, we will be 270 metres above the mountain floor, twice the height of Sydney Harbour Bridge, roughly the same height as Centre Point Town, four Sydney Opera Houses, one on top of the other. 
That's how I have been right now. Thanks to Australia's highest single span cable car. Look at this uh, Over on the right, look out across the valley there, Jamison Valley. Uh, uh, the three sisters go along over there. Go along means well fans in their language. Now up on the left here we've got the two falls being blown around a bit at the moment at this point. So these are the cabins up close that you're going to be catching back. And we'll be catching them back soon. But we'll just come down here just because we wanted to have a little bit of look at the lookout viewpoint just down here. So let's go check this area out. And Prince Cliff Walk. That's where we are at the moment. Prince Henry Cliff Walk. So we'll go over here. So there's the viewpoint up there. Sort of similar to the Three Sisters lookout where we were. Yes, yeah, so that's just where we came across. So to give you context, very steep valley down there that we've just caught this cable car across. Yeah, and the waterfall's down the bottom there. You're gonna walk around, but yeah, it's a bit chilly up here, I'm just gonna say. So next ride is the Scenic Railway. So we're catching a train down to the actual valley. This is what we're going to be catching down the hill. It's a cool looking train. Then we get off this and there's a bit of a walking track around here which we're going to go on now and explore so here's the view from the bottom of the scenic railway tell it it's super beautiful down here but we're going to go for a bit more of a walk so let's go exploring so this used to be a coal mine here in the 1800s or 1870 so sort of that thing. So they're telling a little bit about the history when you get down here as well. You can see some of the coal deposits there. See? Extract from 19... Oh wait, geological report. Are you going to sit like that forever? Don't touch that, it's all black. Mm. Old horsey and the way they used to get the coal out. So here, just for a bit of history. Scenic railway, nearly 100 kilometers of tunnels in the cliffs at the level where you're standing. Coal mining began in 1878. There was about 40 mines at the various times of the railway. You see above. So the railway used to haul the coal up and down. See this old sort of photo here? Now it's all just turned into a bit of rainforest. Ah, oh, there you go. Bit of history there if you want to pause it. <laughs> yeah, so we're just going for, we're going to find the actual sky rail and take that on the way up, which is down the end of this track. So we're going to keep walking for a while, but it's a beautiful little scenic area here if you just want to come for a bit of a walk in the forest. Do I have garbage bins here? So don't litter, put your rubbish in the bins. 
But let's work our way down to the sky rail so we can head back up. All right, we'll keep going. <laughs> and, um, gotta keep exploring, but just look at this rainforest. So this is where he's gonna walk through here. And they've got the walkways here to keep you off the ground. So yeah, really nice here. Okay, we're just coming to the cable car now. So yeah, she catch the railway down and catch the cable car up. Katoomba is a great place to come in the Blue Mountains if you want to see some beautiful scenery. And the Three Sisters, look out where we went, and also here where you've got the scenic railway and everything. It's a very beautiful location. And also check out Katoomba CBD if you're after a bite to eat or some nice little cafes along there as well. But Katoomba is definitely a to-do list if you're a tourist in the Blue Mountains in New South Wales, Australia. So we've just come to Mount Tuma Botanical Gardens. So we're gonna get just a coffee, a little bit of a snack, and then we're gonna go exploring these gardens. And they are quite beautiful and also worth a bit of a trip if you're coming up to the Blue Mountains, especially if you're coming that scenic drive along um, Bell Liners Road. So the place is a little bit of a cafe in it. So we might just get ourselves a snack here and just relax for a little while. So we ordered a apple pie here, but you would have thought they'd serve it with some ice cream or cream on the side, like they normally do, but not in this case. Um, but they have warmed it up a little bit. And then we've also ordered a caramel slice. So I've got my mocha, and we've got a nice hot chocolate there, ready to try. And um, so yes, let's give this a go. And the apple pie was really nice as well. Yeah, apparently down here there's some other sort of things they've added to the gallery. No, like the cafe's been upgraded since I was last year. And they've got this little area too. Explains all the different flowers. Oh yeah, botanic. A little bit of a labyrinth. Do you know what this is about? Oh, duck labyrinth. <laughs> oh, a little bit of a movie theatre here on Aboriginal art. Immerse yourself in the experience. But we're going to go up. Yes. So another little addition they've added to the place. And eventually you've got to walk down to the gardens here. So I did get, did get the bowl of chips. They're really nice and crispy here, quite tasty. So here's the view from Mount Tomo Botanical Gardens here. Really beautiful views here. And you also got outdoor seating area here at the cafe. So just outside the cafe area, you got these nice beautiful gardens here. It's well set out, it's absolutely beautiful. Look at these flowers. I just love the way they always maintain this. Yeah, nice beautiful gardens here. Well set out. The thing I love about these gardens is such a variety of different types of floral, uh, fauna and fauna. Flowers, all sorts of things, absolutely beautiful. I just love these flowers, they're absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, there's bees crawling all off them and just getting the nectar from them. So these gardens are always worth a walk because they are absolutely beautiful. And after eating, you want to walk off some of that food. So this is the perfect place to do it. And, but just check this place out. And it's free for it to entry too, even better. So here they've also got a bit of a water feature. Beautiful flowers all through this garden. But I do love the, the way they set this out. So it comes down here, the water. And they've made it so it runs all the way down like a waterfall, right down to a pond area. But because we're in a bit of a rush, I'm not going to explore today. But it is definitely worth exploring and there's so much more to see at this place. Just look at this tree, it's just absolutely beautiful here. So we're coming up fruit picking here on Bell Liner Road. My brother told me to avoid all the ones on the main road. So we've gone to one off the, off the main road called TNT Produce. So let's go check it out. 
So TNT Produce tends to have a little bit of a cafe here. So you got scones, cakes, different types of pies, apple pies, as well as you got a lot of burgers, chips, hot food, pies, drinks. Yeah, so you got a fair bit here. And oh, where's Anne? She's over here. <laughs> So we've paid our little entry fee, and um, it was fifteen dollars for the three of us. And we're going to come in here and try picking some things. Oh, I don't know what these are, but they said not to pick them. They're down here, so they've cornered off a few places where you can actually come picking. So you can even sit outside and have a bite to eat. But look at this orchard; it's huge. That's a massive orchard here. So let's go in. So yeah, look at they got some beautiful sunflowers here. Don't know what they're growing over here, but that's cherry picking. But that's out of season now. November 2024, they'll be available here. Um, green zucchinis, looks like. White zucchinis. You've got white zucchinis, but we're not after zucchinis. So let's keep walking. when I'm looking at the strawberries I'm going okay they're green so they're definitely not worth picking but um see so yeah, after I'm in this dark red color but something's been eating that one so let's keep walking and see what's here so so some of the apples are actually fenced off at the moment because they're saying they're not ripe yet and so when you see these sort of orange things here that's telling you this is not the area where your fruit pick so you've got to walk down to the areas where you can actually fruit pick here. So there's a variety of different sorts of fruits here, all times of the year. So the good thing about this orchard, it is covering all the seasons, if you look at it. So you just come at different seasons for different types of uh, fruits that you're actually after. Like as they said, cherries will be available, but not until November 2024. Oh, yes. Hmm. No, it's sort of fun walking down this orchard. It's such a bloody big orchard um, around here. Just so many things to choose from at different times of year. These apples here are so sweet and tasty at this orchard. If you're coming here for fruit picking and you want these, definitely pick some of them. They're just super nice. Just get the bright red ones. So this time of year in the beginning of March, they still have Fuji apples that are fit reasonably ripe. So I'm going to see what these taste like. So let's go down and try a few of the big red ones. Mm -hmm. It was red. What kind of bucket? Time to find some nice apple. I haven't tried Fiji apples. I wonder if they're as sweet. These ones look nice, but I don't know whether they're as sweet. The Fiji apples. Let's give one a try. They come off the thing. These are super sweet. So try one. Buy a few of them when you're here. So here you have a range of different non-alcoholic ciders. You got different types of syrup, like pomegranate. And someone was just telling me that this is really good on sort of Middle Eastern dishes. Um, lots of olive oils, different types of jams, sauces if you like your spices. Mm. Different types of pickles here as well. Relishes, olives, spicy relish, apple jelly, uh, marmalade, fig jam. Oh, fig jam. Tempting. Oh, but what I wanted was honey. Ah, and they have honey here. And they also have apple juice. So they also have a range of cakes here, including scones and apple pie and vanilla jam cake. Earlier in the day, they also have a range of different types of pies, but they seem to be a bit out right now. So I did just get one of the local um, non-alcoholic ciders and some bush honey to take home. But yes, the TNT produce, that's where we just were. That's the sign if you're looking at coming to this same place. So now we're ending the day going to O'Donoghue's pub in Emu Plains. That's an Irish pub down here. Meeting up with my daughter here, but yes, we're gonna see what type of food's here. So, Donahue's Pub, which is in Emu Plains in New South Wales, Australia, 
is opposite the train station there, Emu Plains train station. And so we're gonna walk across and just check out this place. Yeah, so they have a range of things on here, watching the footy. But um, yeah, so we're gonna go in and check this place out. And we're gonna find Clara and that, wherever she is. So yeah, apart from the indoor seating, you've also got the outdoor seating and you've got, um, yeah, it looks like a downstairs area, which is closed off. But yeah, you've got a range of good spirits here, bars, things like that, an upstairs function area as well. Yeah, so they've got a range of beers on tap. They've got an outdoor function area. They've got an outdoor area for sitting. And we're gonna check out the menu, of course. And obviously live sports everywhere on the TVs around us. So I've got my beer. And here's some of the starters that you can see here and the average prices of them as we're going down. And also here, some pub classics and I'm gonna order the pan frosted barramundi. The fish. Of course you've got a few seafood platters as well. And some desserts. And of course kids meals. There's also some value lunch menu as well. Your chicken schnitzels, grilled rat, grilled barramundi. And some weekly specials. So it doesn't look like they've got any Sunday specials, but they've got other nights of the week. As you can see, a good range on tap here at this particular bar. And that's just this side. There's more on the other side. And a lot of top shelf whiskies here as well that you can choose from. So we've got ourselves some cool meals, we've got ourselves beef burgers, um, southern chicken burgers, salmon, some good steak, and barramundi. So overall it was a great day and if you like these sort of videos hit like and please subscribe. And the Irish pub meal at the end of the day was awesome, having a bit of a dinner with my daughter, my dad and her boyfriend and overall a great day out.